The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. The Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk and the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. Brought to you by Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Green Coach Tours, proudly serving the traveling public since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Greene County. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity. And now, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. Hello again and welcome into the Frankie DeBus Show. The Tusculum Pioneers and the North Greenville Crusaders from Pioneer Field. It would be the sixth meeting all time. Hello again everyone, I'm Brian Staten to be joined by Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBus. The Pioneers and the Crusaders in a non-conference game. For the North Greenville University Crusaders, however, they don't have a football league to play in. So the South Atlantic Kites... South Atlantic Conference made a scheduling alliance with the Crusaders, and so therefore they play every team in the South Atlantic Conference. Doing a pretty good job of it, too, since 2011. They are 14 and 10 against the South Atlantic Conference, including a 7 and 1 2011, in which they claimed to be the conference champions by the scheduling alliance. It's a very good football team, no question about it, and what they have done. And coach Jeff Farrington has responded in a good way, being his second year as the Crusader head coach. He's got Nelson Hughes and a talent of wide receivers, plus a very good and strong defense. Both of these teams, Tusculum and North Greenville, have started out very similarly. Wins against teams in game one that they should win, and teams in game two that are better did not win. Both teams held a halftime lead last week, Tusculum falling to Elizabeth City State, and the North Greenville University Crusaders falling to the Wofford Terriers out of FCS by a final of 42-27. It's a North Greenville team that is doing exactly what the Pioneers do, and that's pass. And in the nation, they're seventh in pass offense, 10th in total offense. It's a quarterback in Nelson Hughes who is 8th in the nation in passing. He is 12th in the nation in total offense. Robbie Brown is a wonderful wide receiver. He's averaging 198 yards per contest, which is 2nd in the nation. Well, Hughes held up his end of the bargain. Robbie Brown was shut down for much of the contest until extremely late in the game, and unfortunately for the Pioneers, it would be the game-winning drive. The Crusaders, in their first ever win from Pioneer Field, would knock off Tusculum by a final score of 38-35. to A game in which we saw Malcolm Pendergrass throw up, grow up in front of our own eyes. From Game 1 to Game 2, quote, Malcolm Pendergrass throws for 369 yards. The Pioneer offense also runs wild as Fernando Smith runs for 144 yards. Justin Houston establishes a new single game record with 17 receptions in the game and a personal best 199 yards receiving, including a touchdown. If you missed any of the action, you'll get a chance to see it when we return right after this. It was Local Heroes Day and take a kid to the game for a Saturday night under the lights from Pioneer Field that was spectacular and a game that didn't go the Pioneer's way, but we definitely saw a good Pioneer football team. When we come back, we'll take a look at those and be joined by Pioneer coach Frankie DeBus. And that's when the Frankie DeBus Show continues. You are Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Showtime.
Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show. The Tusculum Pioneers and the North Greenville Crusaders from Pioneer Field on a Saturday night under the lights. Atmosphere was electric. The Tusculum Pioneers were looking for their second win of the season. Two teams that, as mentioned, had started the year very similarly, winning the first game of the season against opposition they should win, the second game playing much better opposition, and both teams leading at halftime but coming down with the loss. For the Crusaders of North Greenville University, basically it's a lot of names that were very familiar from a year ago in which they held on to a 39-36 win against the Pioneers in a deluge of rain from Tigerville, South Carolina. No rain on this particular Saturday night as the Pioneers were looking for this their second win. And I think, Coach, what you were looking for was Malcolm Pendergrass. He's got to improve from Game 1 to Game 2. I think we saw that, but uh, it took a little while to get to that point, maybe even into the second half. Yeah, I was a little worried there uh, in the first half, especially, Brian. I was, Malcolm wasn't performing uh, like I was wanting him to or like we had expectations for him to. But as the game went along, you really uh, could watch him. He sort of blossomed right in front of us and started making some decisions and making some throws. And it, what, what it was was he started playing with a little more confidence and uh, controlling the football, running the offense. You know, he's, he's doing the things that you need your quarterback to do, being the leader that he is. And then... You know, uh, Saturday night he made some throws. He made some big time throws. He, he still didn't play perfect by no means, but uh, made some really nice decisions. Uh, protected the football, got it where we needed to get it, uh, got us in and out of plays when it wasn't what we wanted to. He did great running our RPOs, which is run pass option. Just really pleased with his effort. Thought he uh, thought he performed very very well, and actually was uh, was nominated as one of the players of the week. So obviously played well enough to, to at least get that recognition. Another thing this Pioneer team did, the offense wasn't clicking. You're using the run, you're establishing the run, you're doing some of that, I think, to get him comfortable. You're converting third down and short. You got yourself into trouble when you played behind the chains on a penalty, for example, a first down and 10 that became first down and 15. But the offense wasn't clicking in the first half. Your defense kept you in a game to allow your offense the ability to come back. Well, you know, you look at the first half, and we had scored one offensive touchdown. We had 14 points, and you know, I thought uh, I thought we had played well enough defensively at that point in time to, to keep us in the game, give us a chance to win the ball game. We made some plays. We were uh, flying around defensively. Now, as, as the game went along, I, th I think they they started doing some some different things offensively and hurting us a little bit. But still, I I look at uh, look at the film and I watched our kids play and the effort that they gave. And uh, from a defensive standpoint, again, I think we played well enough to win the football game. Uh, you know, it's three weeks in a row now that we've played well enough defensively to win some games. And, and if we keep doing that, we keep giving the effort that we're given, uh, good things are going to happen. I don't know when that's going to take place, but I really, I really believe our football team is, is better. You know, Brian, we, we commented as a staff last year, we were 2-1 and one after our first three ball games and feeling good about it. We're sitting here at 1-2, and two, and I, I know that we're better as a football team a after three games this year than we were three games last year playing the exact three opponents. So... There's a lot of bright things happening. There's a lot of great things happening, and I really feel like our football team's getting ready to, uh, to, to explode. It is a pioneer football team that did explode, especially in the second half. Now, if you weren't there, we're going to show you a few of the highlights from the first half. If you were there, then you're going to enjoy seeing some of these highlights from the first half. Let's go ahead and take a look at your first half highlights of Tusculum versus North Greenville. It's the sixth meeting between the schools all time in a series that began in 1995. An electric atmosphere, Coach, once again, as you get the Pioneer Walk and you get the guys coming in to the stadium. Yeah, our kids love that, man. Our players enjoy seeing our fans. We had a great crowd. Uh, David Martin in the facilities crowd continues to just, just push this tailgate issue. We got f parents and family members, and there's some of our guys that, uh, that are our non-travel squad have painted their bodies, and I don't know if that's pretty or not. There's a lot of paint being used there <laughs> on a couple of those guys, but uh, good atmosphere, great crowd, uh, especially when the sun went down and there's some youngins leading us on the field and big Randy Loggins there, so assistant athletic director, couldn't do it without him and Chad Grindstaff and Buster Scott and that crowd and uh, Matt Gosnell there spraying us some smoke and big Jeremy Wagner leading us out with the flag. It's, a, it's great to see our kids coming out of the tunnel getting excited about football. Pioneers had the ball first on offense, went nine plays, went 28 yards, had to punt it away. North Greenville would take over first and 10 from their own 33-yard line and methodically moved down the field. Thomas Weeks, the first of his two touchdowns of the day, shows how that wide receiver screen can be dangerous. They get it. They go up seven to nothing. And, you know, I'm thinking right there, Coach, well, it was easy. It was their first drive. But, man, we sure did respond, and our offense came out and responded first and ten from our own 35. Yeah, we didn't have too good a series there the first series, but uh, got a little bit loose here and started getting the ball out there to Justin Houston. He's got to hang on the football there. Great job by Kenny Funny getting back on the ball. But, 
Uh, good little pop out there to give us uh, seven or eight yards on first down. And I think our first down production was a whole lot better than a week ago and gives us a chance to convert. I think we're about 50% on third down conversions, which again, it's not necessarily what you're doing on third down as much as what you're doing on first and second down. But Fernando Smith ran the ball exceptionally hard. Um, was a completely different player than he's been, and hopefully he's growing up as well. Hey, Fernando Smith, the 24 carries, 144 yards on the day. Um, a play that was covered up maybe for and Malcolm Pendergrass decided, you know, I'm just going to tuck this and run, pick up four yards, positive gain. Pendergrass on second down and six, even some more. And uh, again, uh, just moving the chains, getting first downs. Great job, great execution, good play calling by, by Mark Kolb. And we're just moving it around here. Here's Justin picking up big eight, nine, ten yards. Great job blocking out there by big Wesley Powell. And, you know, our kids are really flying around. And Wes just, just laying out and making it happen for, for Justin to break that tackle. And I thought he was going to shake loose here. And, oh, this is the one he scored on, actually. And he did shake loose. Great effort. Wes gets back up off the ground. and. Starts leading the troops down the field and uh, being smart. We don't need to hit them in the back, and, and Justin does a good job getting in the end zone. Justin Houston, there's two All-Americans right there making the touchdown for Houston. It was his first touchdown of the season, 31-yard catch and run. That's his third touchdown in two seasons against the North Greenville Crusaders, a drive that took seven plays, 65 yards, 230 off the clock. The Pioneers would tie the game. A huge kickoff return by Cedric Proctor of North Greenville on the ensuing kickoff would put the Crusaders in great field position at the Pioneer 20. However, they would not be able to move a yard. They would miss a field goal from 29 yards. And at the end of the first quarter, it was tied at 7. But North Greenville would, at the end of the first quarter, to the start of the second quarter, again, deep in their own territory, uh, I think a great quarterback. Hughes was sacked for a loss of 6 by Kashad Lyons. Great effort by our kids. Kashad had a phenomenal game. They were having a hard time blocking him. And he's got that ability made some big plays. Here's freshman Evan Altizer. Does a great job for us here on punt return and gets us 15, 20 yards. That's all you can really ask for. And Mike Mosa did an unbelievable job of not clipping that guy in the back. People don't realize how important that is that we've learned. And unfortunately, we weren't able to do what we needed to get done and gave North Greenville the ball back. But here, Mike Isaac makes a great call. And Brandon Bartlett makes a great hit here after Mosa puts some pressure on him. And Mike's in the right place at the right time and scoops and scores from about 75 yards. All right, a, a drive for North Greenville that began at their own 22, ending on that Brandon Bartlett hit. The scoop by Mike Mosa goes 72 yards. It's the longest fumble return in school history at Pioneer Field. It's the third longest in school history at any field. Some of the most memorable fumble returns that I have uh, in my memory, uh, Larry Hollins against Carson Newman in 03, Jeremy Thompson against Carson Newman in 08. Uh, that was the 55 yarder, that was the longest that time. But right there is a momentum turning play for the Pioneers to go up 14 to seven. However, North Greenville, it didn't seem to bother them. They methodically moved back down the field, they score a touchdown, they tie the game up. And, Coach, they didn't seem to be too bothered by the score that the Pioneers had. No, I thought they did a good job there regrouping and, and getting the football back. And then they put two scores on us here right before the half. And we go in 21-14 down. But, uh, you know, again, we're playing good enough defensively to win. But uh, we've scored a touchdown on offense and a touchdown on defense. And we just got to keep it going. We end up getting a little bit, uh, having some success. And then we finally get to moving the chains a little bit. But it's... You know, we got to make these catches right here. I mean, Dilberto's got to make that catch. There's no excuse for that. It's a drop ball, and uh, we've got to be better. He comes up. He misses that one, but uh, he might have made the toughest catch of the game, uh, or at least one of them. You'll see the toughest catch of the game coming up a bit later uh, in traffic for a play to end the first half. Unfortunately, it was not in the end zone. Wouldn't have counted there was a penalty against the Pioneers. That was declined. So it's the end of the first half, and the Crusaders of North Greenville have Gone down 14 to 7. They have come back and they have scored at two touchdowns un unanswered and lead it 21 to 14 at halftime. We're back with your second half highlights when we return right after this for the Frankie DeBus Show. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank, your locally owned community bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. Green Coach Charters and Tours has been proudly serving the traveling public for over 65 years and is the official carrier of Tunsculum College Athletics. If you have never traveled by Green Coach, may we invite you to join them for an exciting travel adventure.
Visit online at greencoach.com. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Ryan Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBusk Show. The pioneers trail 21 to 14 at halftime against the Crusaders of North Greenville University. North Greenville has the ball to start the second half. It's an electric second half. Let's pick up our second half highlights for the Frankie DeBusk Show of Tusculum versus North Greenville. And where we pick up is North Greenville with the football and having some success on their first drive. Uh, Hughes to Garrett, 17-yard touchdown. Uh, they had this thing going, Coach, for a while. They were running downhill, and we didn't have any answers for a while. Well, no, we didn't, Brian. We weren't performing very well early in the in the second half, and they hit that long pass. And then here, we've Evans got to make this play. It was a, a good ball, not a great ball, but we got to do a better job at the corner position. And all of a sudden, we look up, and we're down 35 to 14 in the middle of the third quarter. And I think this sort of goes to show you what kind of football team we have because we didn't act like it bothered us a whole lot. We just went to work and started doing what we do best and running the football, throwing the football, playing well defensively. And there's Malcolm running the option and getting us a big first down and great protection here. And we hit Justin Houston again. He outruns that linebacker, gets us another first down. So things are looking good for the Pioneers. A Pioneer team that has failed on a fourth down prior to the 34th and the 35th point scored for the Crusaders of North Greenville. They had moved the ball deep into North Greenville territory. Crusaders had turned away two fourth down opportunities, and the Pioneers again on the move and marching. You've got Fernando Smith with 144 yards rushing, Malcolm Pendergrass rushing for 66 yards. Here's a team that ran for 249 yards, team known as a passing offense, but what they have been able to use is that dual threat opportunity in the backfield, not only with Fernando Smith, but also Malcolm Pendergrass. And Malcolm coming near side, picking up big yards and picking up yet another first down for the Pioneers. Great effort there by Fernando, just moving the chains and we're throwing and catching. That was a big third down conversion, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And here we are at first down and flip it out there to Justin. And Justin does a great job making a miss and getting us another 15, 20 yards and getting us inside the 10. Justin Houston for 19 yards on the day. I'll give you the idea. 17 catches, 199 yards for Justin Houston. Fernando Smith would punch it in from a yard away. The comeback is on. We don't really, we're not really aware of it. It's 35 to 21 because we have to get a stop defensively. And if it didn't almost happen again, the Pioneers were very opportunistic on defense. Just a bit unlucky there. Yeah, I thought we were going to get that one as well. This is a big time interception by Cam Thomas, young man from up in Kentucky. Just uh, we've moved him to corner and. Uh, Addison Williams, our defensive back coach, done a great job coaching him up. And man, was that, a, that was a big time play. As Cam Thomas has his first career interception, the youngster out of Nicholasville, Kentucky, comes up with the interception. So right at the end of the third quarter, the Pioneers begin a drive that begins from the 20 yard line. Fernando Smith goes for three yards. You've got Pendergrass complete to Kenny Funny for nine yards. And things seem to be clicking for the Pioneers on offense. A lot of good things are happening. Kenny Funny, you're watching him grow up out there and make some plays. And Malcolm Pendergrass is starting to really feel comfortable with what he's doing, making throws like this to convert and just feeling good about what we're doing. We just got to keep it going. And here Malcolm ends up keeping it and getting two or three and keeping them honest. And, you know, our offensive line, we lost some guys up front on the night. Max Gobert went down and uh, look up and we're, we've moved Billy Munker to center. So those guys did a great job of just, just going along with the flow. Nick Wozick came in, made some plays for us up front, doing a good job. So uh, you never know when your number gets called. Justin Houston with a catch of 15 yards and a very uncharacteristic uh, drop for Justin Houston on the day. Fernando Smith here in the second half seems to say this offensive line has been leaning on that defensive line for a while. He'll go for 19 yards. Fernando Smith will go for 28 yards, and he's just kind of been running free in the secondary on this drive. Great effort by Fernando. Just uh, the offensive line's doing a really good job, but Fernando's doing his part as well. And Alberto's getting a big block for him, getting us inside the five-yard line. And, the big horse is just running it hard, and we just got to keep feeding him the football. All right, where we have struggled somewhat over the last few years, that's inside the five-yard line with trying to throw it around and score. We don't appear to be struggling much with the backs that we have. Fernando Smith, no, he doesn't get in, and Pendergrass doesn't get in. But if at first you don't succeed, then try, try again. Fernando Smith's second touchdown of the game. Great effort, great job up front, creating the seam, and 
Fernando using his athletic ability and just going up and over, but we got us a football game. Pioneers force a three and out on the next play. The score is 35 to 27. The fireworks are going off while we're trying to snap the football. It was a little bit unlucky. We didn't get an opportunity. We fumbled the point after, so it's 35-27 after an 11-play 80-yard drive. The Pioneers are backed up near their 10-yard line, and here goes Fernando Smith once again. That's a, probably his best run of his career right there. Just does a great job getting north and south, making a miss hanging on to the football. Here are guys are blocking downfield for each other, and this, this, we're just so close to being special. We just got to keep digging in there. This drive is thankful because of Iram Aikens, Johnny on the spot recovery of a muffed punt opportunity. So the Pioneers begin at their own 10-yard line. That was Justin Houston for nine more yards. And then, again, this running game, DJ Haney, he's a youngster out of Greenville High School from Newport, Tennessee, comes up with the big run. He had, just lowers the shoulder. He lowers the boom. He runs behind the pads, and he is tough to bring down. He does a good job. He's going to be a special football player. Uh, he came in there and acted like a veteran, hadn't played much on the night, if any, and just stepped right up and did his part. He's got to make that catch right there. He might break a tackle and score, but he got the big dog award for running over that defensive player like he did. And we don't get it in, unfortunately, and our defense takes the field, causes a fumble, and we get it right back. All right, Pioneers fail on fourth down. They give it to North Greenville, and on one play, Hughes – Fumbles the football, recovered by, you guessed it, Mike Mosa, who scored the touchdown earlier. So the Pioneers have yet another opportunity. They start right where they left off from about the North Greenville 13-yard line. Fernando Smith rushing for three, then on third down looking for Deion Hicks in the corner of the end zone and thought he held on to it. I thought he did as well. Deion generally makes that catch. Unfortunately, I don't guess he did, but uh, we got to make sure and Take advantage of that. It was a good ball. Uh, Dion went up, tried to rebound it like he's coached to do, and just didn't come down with it. Go for it on fourth down once again. The pass was incomplete to Houston right here. And Pendergrass, you know, I look at it from a perspective from a radio guy. I see Dion Hicks, who's got a much smaller guy, but uh, Justin Houston had been the guy in the game. Yeah, we, we decided to give him a shot at it. At least we uh, did throw it at him and give him a chance. And Unfortunately, we did not convert. Here comes big Kashad Lyons and Rocky Jones making big plays for us on defense. All right, defensively, Kashad Lyons had 10 tackles, two sacks, three tackles for loss. He's gone over 100 tackles now for his career for the senior from Ellenwood, Georgia. And this is a youngster that uh, we're expecting big things out of this year. Got it. They get that sack. You force a punt. Gravely has done a great job punting all game. And here is Kenny Funny as we start this drive late. Uh, again, in the fourth quarter, the Pioneers trail 35 to 27. Doing a good job here, of just just converting, and there were some critical downs here, some critical throws. Great job right there by Kenny Funny, not trying to get to the sideline, but getting north and south and converting and getting a big first down. Funny for five, then Funny for 10 yards, then a middle screen for Nando Smith. He's not known as the pass catching back in the backfield, but comes up with the completion for five more yards to move the chains. Then on third down and five, Justin Houston. Um, for a couple, and then the first fourth down conversion comes, and it was close for Malcolm Pendergrass, who took it to the line to gain to convert yet another first down, and then the big pass play for Malcolm Pendergrass to Justin Houston. Great ball, great catch by Justin. Just a great catch. He's a great football player, great young man. I love to see those guys have success, especially ones that work as hard as Justin has worked to put himself in position he has. Kenny Funny across the middle, maybe the best, again, another great ball by Pendergrass. Great throw. Maybe the best ball he threw all night was hitting Kenny right there in stride and giving us a touchdown. And, you know, we're excited, but we're still down two. We got to go for the two point conversion here and make a great call and a good throw and a good catch. And this will be the first time I've really seen this up close and personal. But a uh, great job there by Dion, just getting his hands on the football, hanging on to it and giving us two. Uh, you know, looking at West Powell in the back of the end zone, I thought it had been dropped. Uh, I, I realize now he was celebrating, and the officials had such a late call. So the two-point conversion is good. Deion Hicks makes an incredible catch, and the Pioneers have tied the game. And North Greenville comes back, coached as if they were unfazed. They hadn't done anything all second half. Had a big play to their big receiver in Robbie Brown for 29 yards, put him in position. They were first and 15 here, and uh, we had just a missed assignment. Yeah, we just got to get over there and make that play. We're just a little bit late. Took a little hole shot on us there, and we gotta we got to be there and knock the ball down or be there and make the tackle. And here their kicker comes in. He missed one earlier from the same distance, and he hits, hits it good. And unfortunately for us, we end up uh, losing that one by three, but they made plays there in the end when they needed to. Hey, okay. Just a tough break for the Pioneers who had to watch that field goal sail through the uprights so North Greenville gets the win. Incidentally, the first win for the Crusaders at Pioneer Field. No team had won, basically, 
um, on the road with the exception of the Pioneers. A Tusculum team where Justin Houston establishes a new program single game record, 17 catches in the game, and a new personal best for him, 199 yards receiving. The catches for a game surpasses that of Kevin Wolcott. We may remember it was the longest trip ever to North Dakota State. He had 15 catches in that game. Houston, that's what he's capable of. Last week was shut out basically against Elizabeth City State in a quagmire of a game. Comes back, response. Pendergrass throws for a career best for him, 369 yards. A coach I think I was most impressed with, and I think it's what people are talking about, is our running game is pretty good. It makes us way two-dimensional. I don't think North Greenville really knew what to do late in the contest. Well, again, we were running the football there uh, late in the game when we needed some big plays, and we were getting big plays. Malcolm was keeping it and having some success, and Fernando was hard to bring down. And then we bring in true freshmen uh, from right here in Greenville, and DJ does a great job running the football and, and protecting it. And those are all great things we can build on and great things. We're going to need those as the season goes along. But, uh, you know, really back to our offensive linemen, they got beat and banged up and just did a really good job for us uh, filling in where they needed to fill in and having some success. The one thing that I was getting ready to do, and I was serious, we were getting ready to change that whole coach to bus comeback victories, <laughs> the biggest comeback victory ever. I was getting ready to do that. You're down 35 to 14. Your team never gave up. And I think that's what we're talking about, a veteran team. Um, we haven't had that opportunity to talk about. You said they weren't really that phased by what was happening and what was around them. And that shows, I think, the poise of a good football team. Uh, Brian, our, our kids just stayed focused. They, they never gave up. We didn't throw in the towel. We put ourselves in position to win the ball game, got it back defensively, scored offensively, made catches, made tackles, made plays, caused fumbles. Uh, a lot of things that you got to do in those kind of ball games. And, now, unfortunately, for two weeks in a row, we've let one get, get, get by on us with just one score. So we're in these one-score games, and I think we're, we're right where we need to be, but we've got to find a way to overcome those one-score games and be on top. So it remains 16 points, the biggest deficit the Pioneers have overcome in the DeBusk era, and it will remain that way because that was the last time that the Pioneers came that far behind. And it was against the LR Bears in Hickory, whom is our next opponent. We'll talk about that when we come back, but first, our Applebee's player interview and our spotlight with Mike Mosa and our players of the week. That's when we return with more of the Frankie DeBus Show right after this. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBusk Show. The Pioneers fall to North Greenville University by a final score of 38 to 35. Tusculum falls to 1 and 2 on the year. The North Greenville University Crusaders improve to 2 and 1 now on the season. It's time to take a look at some of the guys responsible for some of the big numbers that we put up in this game. But first, we chat with a guy who establishes a new field record, the longest fumble return in school history, Mike Mosa, for our Applebee's interview. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBuss Show with our player interview, joined by Mike Mosa. Big fumble return for a touchdown in this game, the third longest in school history. It's the longest at Pioneer Field. Really turned the momentum in this football game. Mike, take me through the play, and how did you guys get an opportunity to take the lead on your fumble return? Uh, coach called a great blitz. It was a perfect call. I came in, messed up quarterback's read. He pump faked it, gave Brandon enough time to come get it out of there. I picked it up, get six. Let's go. You know, it didn't really change the momentum for North Greenville. They were ride some momentum. It's almost like that type of a play sparked them. What was what was the turning point for them, and why were they so successful? Uh, they fought. They was actually um, executing. We had it down. We just had to wrap up, make tackles. They catch the ball, get them down right there. We messed up, gave a couple of big plays. It's, it's, all, it's us. It's all on us. All of it. You know, but you turn it around. They're driving again. Cameron Thomas comes up with the play in the corner of the end zone. Was that the was that the play defensively that seemed to spark the offense? Yeah, Cameron Thomas. He came up with a great play. He uh, he went up there, got, got get it, and uh, 
Offense, they fed up off of it. They ate. They came back. Defense, we ate. We fought. We fought. I'm really proud of the offense. I'm proud of the defense. Uh, we just couldn't get it out. All right, look, we, you're a defensive guy. Let's talk about a couple of those offensive guys. Houston goes for 199 tonight in receiving. Fernando Smith goes for about 140 tonight. Uh, we've got some guys that are, you know, doing things tonight. Pendergrass comes up with one of maybe the best games. This is a redshirt freshman. How much did he grow up tonight? Hey, he uh, – he, he stepped up to be a man today. Hey, we down, we were down, I think 21, and everybody's head was down. Offense, they came out there. Justin Houston, he led them. Fernando, um, I'm proud of uh, all our running backs. They came out there, we did our thing. It, it just wasn't enough, period. Two-point conversion, get a chance to tie this thing. Did you watch it? What was some of the emotion on the sideline? I didn't watch it. I was over here on the end. I couldn't watch it. I didn't look. I heard it. I heard everybody yelling, ran off a kickoff. I was ready to go get it. How deflating, though, that they get that, that ball through the uprights. How deflating for this football team? How do you put it behind you? He almost didn't get it, but, I mean, he got it. Game over with, behind. We got conference play next week. Lenore Ryan, we can be 2-2. Two and two. We can still win the sack. We haven't played a conference game yet. We can still get it. That's Mike Mosa, our player interview for the Frankie DeBus Show. Thanks to Mike Mosa for his time after the game. Didn't definitely, he definitely didn't want to sit there and talk about it after the loss. But as he said, it's time to turn the page and look forward to the Lenore Ryan Bears. We'll get there in just a couple of days. First, let's take a look at some of the other guys responsible for having a wonderful game. We'll start with our Sodexo Offensive Player of the Game, and it comes from the backfield. It's Fernando Smith, the sophomore out of Baltimore, Maryland from Sherwood High School. 24 carries in the game, 144 yards, a new career best for him, including two touchdowns, now with five touchdowns in his career against the Crusaders of North Greenville University, and with stat that all the offensive coaches are impressed with, he had six yards per carry. Our Greenville Light and Power defensive players of the game, Kashad Lyons, a guy who could be an all-conference All-American, the senior out of Ellenwood, Georgia from Woodland High School, also a member of the Pioneer Elite, goes over 100 tackles for his career at Tusculum with 10 tackles in the game with two sacks and three tackles for loss. Mike Mosa, the junior from Memphis, Tennessee, out of Whitehaven High School, an athletic director honor roll honoree at Tusculum College, had just two tackles in the game, but had two fumble recoveries. One of those, the third longest fumble recovery in school history, went 72 yards for a touchdown. Our Green Coach Tours Special Teams Player of the Week is Iram Aiken, the junior from Hanahan, South Carolina, from Hanahan High School, which is just outside of the Charleston area. Now, Iram on special teams was responsible for keeping the drive for the game-tying touchdown there at the end. He comes up with a fumble recovery on the muff punt. Iram also had four tackles in the game, including a tackle for loss for the Pioneers. Our Andrew Johnson Bank called the game. Why not? Third longest in school history, it was the longest at Pioneer Field history, 72-yard fumble return for Mike Mosa. As here he's going to be hit and fumbles the football, picked up at the 30, to the 40, to the 50, to the 40, to the 30, to the 20. No one will touch him. Mike Mosa all the way for his first career touchdown, and the Pioneers on defense get a turnover converted into points. It's time now to take a look at our Creekside Market post-game wrap-up. In the contest, the Pioneers number-wise look pretty good in the game. A little bit of that skewed because of field position for North Greenville. The Tusculum 32 first downs, North Greenville did have 28. Rushing yards, Tusculum with 249, North Greenville with 187. The Pioneers come up with 365 yards passing, the Crusaders 358. And in the game, the Pioneers ran 99 plays for 614 yards. The Crusaders 72 plays for 545 yards. Their 72nd play, however, was a game-winning field goal to give them the 38-35 win. The Pioneers very opportunistic on defense. They recovered two fumbles, one for a touchdown. Tusculum did fumble it three times, and the Crusaders did have one fumble recovery in the game. Pendergrass didn't throw an interception. Hughes did throw his third interception of the year to Cam Thomas in the back of the end zone. Pioneers could not take advantage of the three turnovers, however, in the game. Time of possession, Tusculum 30 minutes and 18 seconds. The Crusaders 29 minutes and 42 seconds. Tusculum again good on third downs, nine of 18, four for 10 for the Crusaders. But the stat that looms large, Tusculum was 0 for 4 from fourth down tried to convert early all of those inside the 30-yard line of the Crusaders. They would end two of six fourth downs for the game. Tusculum red zone, just two for six. The Crusaders finish three for six on the day. Both teams come up with three sacks in the contest as well. Our Creekside Market post-game wrap-up. We wrap it up with Coach Frankie DeBus. 
when we return right after this as you listen and watch The Frankie DeBus Show. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank, your locally owned community bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. Creekside Market has three locations in Southern Greene County to serve. So while you're traveling to or from any game, stop by and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Creekside Market just off the 107, locations on the Asheville Highway, Camp Creek, and the Irwin Highway. Creekside Markets in Greene County. And Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show. The Pioneers fall to North Greenville University. Thrilling game, 38-35. The Crusaders defeat the Pioneers. Thrilling, yes, for North Greenville. Thrilling from a fan aspect to see a young quarterback emerge with a bunch of veterans around him. But I think more impressively, too, the fact that this defense was flying around making some plays after a, a rough go of it for a while. We welcome back in Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk. You are time to turn the page, but... I think we saw that improvement from true game one to true game two. Oh yeah, I, I was. I thought our kids really made some strides. Uh, I thought our football team grew up in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, some of the guys that didn't perform very well in week one or, or week two really performed well in week three, and uh, we're making plays all over the field. Uh, we've made more plays in, the, in the, the, these th past three weeks than we've really made in a long time. I guess I'm talking as much defensively as anything, but. We're running the football. We're doing things that we needed to do to be successful and thought we needed to do to be successful. And, and Brian, we're going to be successful. We're, uh, we're traveling to Hickory next and play a really good Lenoran football team. And you know what they do, they do well on offense. And we've got to be disciplined. And right now our strength has been our defensive side of the football. And hopefully they'll, uh, they'll give us some things that we can work on. And, and our defense will step up and make plays where we need to. And we'll just keep growing and keep becoming a better football team offensively. And, our quarterback play will get better, our running back play will get better, our kids up front we can get healthy and we just got to find a way to, to overcome this uh, this minimal scoring deficit and try to get a win. It's a Lenore Ryan team that finished the runner-up in the national championship game last year but it's a three-time conference champion as the uh, LR Bears have grown by leaps and bounds. Now coaching change, they've had a little different change of the guard there and they also have a little different look in their defense with some of the names that are gone from last year and graduation but it's a team obviously that can put up points they defeat Wingate last week 51 to 14 on the road we're going to the home and night football at their place ready for a pioneer team that's hungry for a win so our bear team despite a lot of talk seems to be still clicking on all cylinders they played well against Wingate I actually watched some of that game uh, Saturday afternoon getting ready for our North Greenville game but they got a good football team uh, they, they're veterans in a lot of in all of areas they lost a lot of good players uh, but there's some young players stepping up for them, making plays, and we're going into probably the most hostile environment we'll play in. I love playing in Hickory. I think it's a great setting, a great atmosphere. They do a good job getting a lot of people out to the game, and they have, they've had some success, which obviously brings on that, that uh, um, the participation from the community. And you know, we've uh, we got to go over there with a completely different mindset. We got to go that what what's happened has happened, and we got to go over there and try to find a way to win. Coach, unfortunate this past Saturday. Best of luck between the bricks at Red Stadium. Thank you, Brian. Pioneer coach Frankie DeBus. Tushkillum takes on the Lenore Ryan Bears again. Three-time defending conference champion. Should be an outstanding contest. We hope that you'll join us on the Pioneer Sports Network as well. You can tune in on AM 1450 WSMG or worldwide through TuscalumPioneers.com. And we'll begin at 6 o'clock with our Pioneer kickoff show coverage. Kickoff will be 7 o'clock in Hickory, North Carolina. The Lenore Ryan University Bears will also provide live stats and also live video, which is free for you to view. But we appreciate you tuning in to us as well. For Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk, for Cody St. Myers, and for Nathan Humbert. I'm Brian Staten. Until next week, go Pioneers. This has been the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk, featuring coaches' interviews, player spotlights, highlights, and statistical breakdowns.
presented by Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Green Coach Tours, proudly serving the traveling public since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Greene County. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity. The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network.